this is Shekhar Bajaj. Uh, good evening to all of you, and thank you for being there for this conference call. Uh, you must have uh, gone through the press release and the uh, results. So uh, I think we are reasonably satisfied with the performance of the consumer business. I mean, uh, to have a positive EBITDA in spite of uh, the sales being down by 50% shows that once our normal business comes up, then uh, we should be in a very profitable state. One of the good news is that our first level margin for this quarter compared to June quarter, uh, June quarter of last year is higher by about 2% plus. Only because our turnover is down and therefore to that extent our profitability has got impacted, but that is something which was expected. In the month of April, it was zero. In the month of May, it was about 50%. And the good news is that in the month of June, we've done over 100%. Uh, that means more than uh, June of last year. And July also is almost equal to the previous year in spite of all the closures, all the slowdowns, all the lockdowns. In spite of that, it shows that once this thing gets cleared, then the future in the season time, we can expect to grow much better. And therefore, our internal objective is that uh, though we've lost one and a half months because of this COVID situation and lockdown situation, we hope that last year we did about 28, 2900 crores. So we should do around 3000 crores in the current year also in the consumer business. In the EPC business, strategically we had done last year against 3800 crores, we have done 1900 crores. This year we are still got good order book and therefore we still hope that in the next three quarters we should be able to catch up and end up around last year level, maybe a few or 5% lower, but we will not go higher than last year. So we hope that against last year's 4900 crores, we should do around 5000 crores in the current year also. The other aspect which is most important is during this period, normally a person would say that, you know, how can I collect money? Everything is closed on. But we are happy to inform you that we were able to uh, collect substantial amount of money and uh, 145 crores further uh, cash flows have improved and therefore our debt has been reduced from a 2,000 crores previous year to uh, we had done 962 crores end of March last year. And by end of June, we have now reached a level of 810 crores. And therefore, interest cost against 49 crores last year, this year it is only 26 crores, which is a, a reduction of almost 50%. So interest cost has gone down by 50%. We are hoping that the interest cost in the coming quarters will be even further lower. So against the 170 crores, that was our total interest cost for the last year, full year, we expect that it will be below 100 crores in the current year. As far as EPC is concerned, the overall costs are continuing because uh, our business has substantially come down. Even last year, it was 50% of the previous year, but the first quarter is even uh, more than 60% lower. Of course, uh, April, May was completely almost zero, and June also is not picked up as well as we can because the number of sites and all have not uh, given us time for execution. So EPC will take its own time, but as long as our monies are coming in and we are really improving our cash flows, that is most critical. So we are very positive and very happy about the performance that has happened. And I would now request Anil Poda, our executive director, to add some uh, points to this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bajaj. The, good evening, everyone. This is Anuj Podar. I think he's covered all the points, not much to add. Just a couple of things that I'll emphasize and just add to. One is, you know, like he said, we've been, you know, I think I'm fairly satisfied with this quarter, particularly our consumer business and the bounce back in the consumer business that we've seen, particularly in June. Uh, I think a lot of that I would credit to our team's ability to respond dynamically to the evolving situation. It has not been easy. We've had many challenges on supply chain, on you know logistics, on warehouses, on factories, etc. But we've continued to respond to that on a week-on-week -week basis to deliver the consumer uh, business revenue. Uh, the part that he mentioned about the first level margin expansion, I think that is critical. Like we've been saying, our longer term 
focus is to drive margin expansion for the consumer business. So we've driven a more than two percentage point gain at the first level margin. The bottom line, it's not translated because of this quarter, as you would understand. But going forward, I think that should hold us in good stead. On the EPC, it has been a challenging quarter on execution and billing because that is very labor dependent. And therefore, unless the movement and uh, availability of labor normalizes, I think that may stay a little bit under pressure. Uh, what's helped us contain the impact of this at the bottom line and deliver positive on the consumer and also contain a little bit of negative on EPC has been our focus on costs. So besides driving cash flow focused, which uh, Mr. Bajaj spoke about, we've been very focused on controlling our costs. If you look at it, overall, broadly speaking, our costs are at sub 50% of last year, but that includes a cutback on variable costs, which anyway would come down, but also many other so-called uh, fixed costs, which we've aggressively looked to contain. Going forward, our intent is not to come back to full cost levels. So wherever cost savings can be continued going forward, we are also focused on getting the advantage of that for the rest of the year so that we partly make up for the losses of the first quarter on a bottom line basis. Uh, yeah, so I think I'll pause here. Some other comments I can take up uh, later based on the questions. Thank you very much. Also, I'd like to just mention that our director, my daughter-in-law, Pooja, Pooja, she's also uh, going to be available. So she would like to learn. So she's also uh, there with me uh, during this conference call. Thank you. Now we can have it open for uh, question answers. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star and one on your touchstone telephone. Participants wish to ask questions, may press star and one. We have the first question from the line of Archal Loare from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, my question was, uh, sir, can you give some color with respect to the ECT business in terms of appliances, lighting, fans, uh, what has been the, um, uh, you know, decline? Sure. Achal, so this is Anuj. Uh, I'll give you the percentages, but frankly, I think the comparison doesn't draw that much meaning. Uh, lighting is down by about 40%. Everything is Y on Y. Right. Appliances down by about 53%. Fans by 50% and Morphe Richards by 51%. But qualitatively speaking, I think we've seen buoyancy in the appliances, particularly kitchen appliances, and we've seen a reasonably good comeback on the fans category. Uh, coolers performed below what we would have expected, even in terms of comeback. And lighting, you know, we unlike the rest of in the, the industry, we had a growth for the last few quarters, but obviously this quarter, we did not see that growth in lighting. Right. And uh, you touched upon the uh, margin expansion, the first level margin expansion by about yes. 200 basis points. Yeah. Now, uh, A, uh, uh, is it uh, driven by the, uh, you know, uh, a price increase or is it driven by uh, the product mix in, in terms of premium and non-premium? Uh, and uh, is it also uh, to do with the uh, product mix, you know, in terms of the uh, individual category mix? So, uh the uh, single largest component of that has been due to price mix. Having said that, we are we have been premiumizing certain product categories and doing that. But uh, at present, in this quarter, I think the bulk of the contributor has been price increase. And what is the and just FI, the price increase is obviously not taken in this quarter, but it was taken uh, in the middle of last year. So the last year's quarter 
it was taken after june quarter of last year and uh, would you remember what is the broad increase at the aggregate level would that be so the uh, broad increase on a very generalized average basis would be between 2 and 3% it obviously varies across certain product categories uh, there is certain cost increase also in some categories but the rest of it is coming through some of the smaller other contributions but broadly it is price increase average between 2 and 3% and what is the mix now in terms of the premium uh, you know if i have to look at last 12 months what is the mix uh, uh, for us in the uh, consumer product business from premium category so to be honest that's a very qualitative uh, definition of premium so we don't define it as premium or not just directionally for example fans as you may know we've always been more focused on sub economy and economy we did la- launch premium fans uh, towards latter half of last year similarly individual models we've been plugging in the premium category in mixer grinders or other appliances but holistically as a company we don't have any premium versus non premium uh, bifurcation as such in sales got it uh, other question if i may ask uh, with respect to the epc business now uh, uh, can you help us with respect to uh, the receivable as of 30th of june uh at the uh, total uh, and uh, break up in terms of epc and consumer product so let me bring in our cfo mr purandre who's on the call yeah. yeah total receivables at the company level is uh, 2300 crores okay out of that uh, epc is 1843 crores okay and 459 crores is for consumer durable Uh, which is obviously a gross figure uh, the channel finance uh, which funded by channel finance is 287 crores uh, that's part of the 453 crores right correct right and within the epc um, you know uh, would it be possible to give some color uh, as to you know how much is retention money out of this uh, could there be a risk uh, in terms of provisioning of these uh, given the way uh, payments are getting delayed uh, in general uh, from the government institution see uh, out of this 850 crores around 660 crores is a retention money uh, which is obviously receivable after the completion of projects and uh, uh, as far as provisioning is concerned as you know we already have the very robust provisioning policy uh, which is i think more of stringent policy for the provisioning so whatever we feel that is not collectible we uh, regularly take the provisions for those so whatever receivables what we are showing in this books they are all collectible right uh, just uh, one more question actually with respect to this you know uh, based on the current assessment in terms of the situation uh, do you see uh, a, a, a possibility of any substantial provisioning uh, for these uh, you know uh, out of the epc receivables uh in in uh, balance 9 uh, months fy21 uh i at least we don't see that kind of a risk uh, because most of the clients are government clients and there may be a delay in getting the payments but uh, there is no risk of uh, writing it off this receivable got it uh, great that's really helpful i'll come back in the queue for first for the question thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Avnish Agarwal from Prabhudas Leeladhar. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi sir. A couple of questions from my side. Uh, first, I just missed on the number that how is the uh, how is the sales recovery happening in the month of April, May, and June, and how confident are you of sustaining this trend in the coming quarters? This is my question number one. thank you avnish so you know our sales in april was zero our sales in may was approximately 50% and our sales in june was approximately 104% of previous june so therefore on an overall basis it kind of averages out at about 50% of the previous quarter uh you know the good news and the bad news on this the good news is that let's take the june number that is despite the fact that all of india is not open even in june we had many markets including urban metro markets and areas that while well, technically they may be called open but actually they were shut down to various extents etc so not all restrictions have been relaxed so you know sales revenue has been despite the market not fully being open 
the July situation has been slightly worse in terms of uh, sporadic local lockdowns, at, which has started to affect supply for us more than really demand. So the good news is we're seeing a demand bounce back more than just pent up demand. I think there is a certain amount of, uh, what should I say, buoyancy or at least a certain amount of comfort that the demand has not been, you know, not has not evaporated. But supply really is a concern because of the local lockdowns. I remain hopeful that, you know, another few weeks or end of August or by September, supply issues also should should sort them out, assuming that we don't continue to have these lockdowns, in which case I think the rest of the year should be good for us. Yeah. I would like to just add that in spite of uh, these problems which we are talking about, July was uh, was not as good as we would have liked it, but it's almost equal to last year's July. So to that extent, uh, it's uh, satisfactory. But, you know, because of the slowdown and because of the uh, lockdown in uh, various areas, we would have liked to start our growth in July, which is not taking place. That's why he says not satisfactory means from the angle of our own internal, because we have to make up for what we lost in April may have to be made up. And therefore, we wanted to start after June being 100% plus, we wanted July onward to be 100% plus, so which did not happen, but we have reached almost a, a July level, which is a good news. Okay. Uh, so my second question is, you indicated 2% 2 margin expansion at the first level in consumer business. So can you uh, throw a little bit more light on what is exactly this 2% expansion at the first level and what sort of a trajectory you are looking in terms of margin over the next two, three years? So I did share that in the previous one, that margin expansion has come largely through due to price increase that we had taken last year. I think it was around July, August that we took the increase. Uh, going forward, what we expect is a one percentage point increase on an operating margin for consumer segment per annum. That may be slightly lower in the first couple of years and higher in the later years. But what we're also looking to do over the next two, three years is invest in certain areas. When I say invest, that's in product, in R&D, in quality, and in brand building. And all of these investments should be self-funded. So some of the first level margin will be re reinvested in product and R&D. And similarly, some of the margin expansion or savings that will drive at overhead will self-fund the brand building activities. So we want to invest in these things to drive future longer term growth, but without actually impacting margins, and hopefully actually continue to expand margins while you're doing these things. Okay, sir. Uh, so just a final bit from me is on the EPC business. Uh, now the EPC business, I would say, like uh, one is your transmission line towers, and we are having this year lighting projects and your rural uh, power distribution. Uh, now, in particular, uh, if we have to dissect each of these businesses, which are the sustainable businesses for the company in the long term, and do you have? At any stage, any plans to exit your transmission line towers or the rural power distribution business? So if you see FY19 versus FY20, in FY19, you know, overall EPC business, almost two-thirds of the company. And even within that, your power distribution is a dominant share of almost two-thirds of total EPC business. So we've, we've significantly changed that. Overall EPC business has come down to one-third. And within that, each of these three segments at a very broad level are one-third each. So we managed to contain the power distribution business, which was causing a certain issue at that point of time. Now, going forward, we do not expect to significantly descale this business, but like as the chairman said, we will probably contain the business more or less at these similar levels. Uh, we are continuing currently to bid for transmission line tower businesses. Uh, the illumination or lighting business is a general ongoing business so that anyway continues. The power distribution business, as of now, our hands are full in executing the UP and the non-UP uh, order book. As and when that closes down, then we will take a call on what is to be done. Okay. Any uh, plans in the longer term to be much the your EPC business? No stated plans as of now. I think we are more focused on handling the current projects rather than, you know, look uh, taking a call on that or doing anything about that. Okay, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Bed from IIFL. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Good evening, sir. I have a few questions. Um, first, um, I missed uh, the initial opening remarks. 
Um, so if you don't mind, can you help uh, sharing how was the um, broad growth rate up within the ECDs uh, across uh, different categories? Uh, yeah, so that's within consumer, right? So Renu, yeah. good afternoon. This is Anoj. So lighting has degrown by 40%. Your appliances has degrown by 53%. Fans has degrown by 50%. And Morphe Richards, which is much smaller, has degrown by 51%. That's a quantitative answer, but more qualitatively speaking, we continue to see good traction on appliances, particularly the kitchen appliances. The cooler business is the one that was slow to come back, and we've seen good traction on the fans business when the markets opened. And uh, what is the kind of inventory uh, are you stuck with in the cooler business? Mr. Purandre? So I don't... Okay. Do we have an inventory uh, which is stuck with the company uh, in the cooler portfolio? Everything has been talked with the dealer distributors. No, so we do have cooler inventory stuck with us also. It is not as substantial as some of our peers, I won't name them, but who are cooler focused otherwise. But yes, we do have cooler inventory. I think that's unavoidable there. Yeah. You know, I think the good news for us is because we are a diversified product category business, uh, that doesn't have an overbearing impact on our uh, balance sheet or other issues. So it's something we are not overly, you know, uncomfortable with there. Right. Um, so second was uh, a bit on the APC side of the business. Uh, so if you look at the entire portfolio, obviously there are execution headwinds as well. Uh, so how should we look at, uh, A, the current order backlog that we have and uh, the completion timeline of the rest of the UC project, including add-on jobs? Um, and how should we view the uh, payment uh, timelines, including a release of retentions uh, from the state? So I'll let a CFO answer the receivables and payment, but before that, just in terms of you know execution, I think uh, COVID has impacted EPC more because it is labor-dependent labor and labor needs to move across districts or states to execute some of this work. So to that extent, that's why EPCUC is more impacted than consumer is right now, okay? Yeah. It is yet not gathered full steam right now as we speak, but we are on that job. Uh, in terms of this order backlog or otherwise, UP business, there continues to be certain incremental work, which is called phase two or phase three. To yeah. some extent, the good news for that is that helps us to continue to, because incremental work all is at you no know, incremental margin compared to earlier work that we've done. But we yet want to do finite amount of incremental work, not chase that margin unlimitedly, number one. Uh, one of the issues that is coming up more recently is in the transmission line business. The order book growth is slow right now because the new uh, projects that are coming up have slowed down in terms of the government uh, or power grid or others issuing fresh tenders. Yeah. Uh, the post the China issue, some of the tenders that were issued or were in WIP stage have been cancelled because you know the respective entities have revised the tender conditions to exclude certain China originated materials. Yeah. To that extent that those tenders are being reopened, refloated and therefore rebid for, I don't think that changes the dynamic of that yeah. business, but does delay some of the uh, billing or the order book closure or the the tendering closure for three to four months. So I think to that extent there may be a slight slippage on what we had anticipated for this year on our TL uh, billing there. We'll see how that goes. It's a little early to say how much of that delay will be. We'll catch up on an accelerated basis or may have a one or two months delay in terms of actual, you know, the entire process. Okay. Um, is Mr. Uh, Prandavis just clarifying yeah. on the amount? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, see, as, as I already said, that the total outstanding uh, for the EPC is 1,843 crores. Yeah. And out of that, 660 crores is a retention money. Obviously, yeah. this retention has a different maturity because mm. some of the projects of uh, uh, rural education in Bihar MP, they are already uh, on the verge of closure or some of them are already closed. That retention is around 250 crores, which is obviously collectible as soon as we complete everything as far as financial closure of the project is concerned. The 200 crores uh, retention is for the UP projects, which is obviously going to be take a little more time because we are not at all the projects in the UP. Uh, so it will have some lag effect. And the remaining uh, retention money, which is for transmission line tower and illumination, is around 190 to 200 crores. So out of which uh, part of this will come in this financial year, 
and uh, remaining will go to next financial year on the basis of how the projects are getting completed so that is the overall the retention uh, uh, collectability right um and uh, then probably the last question on the consumer part of the business again um uh, probably yes uh, to could we continue to see those um, erratic or cyclical uh, lockdowns impacting uh, supply as well as demand but as we move towards the festive season um, what is the broad understanding based on feedback from channel partners and uh, your secondary sales data points which you track um in terms of demand uptake um, should we expect normalization by diwali um, or you think uh, for the business to normalize could actually take longer in terms of uh, the timeline for an acquisition renu so let me answer that from the demand side i think demand yet remains very buoyant and strong okay so i don't think now we have you know that worried about demand on the supply side i also don't believe that lockdown can continue for so long so i think the governments even local level governments are under pressure to allow for the activity i would yet think festive is a couple of months away and we should start you know normalizing by that point of time having said that the slight issue there is on you know just the logistics of this because for supply sales to happen at a retail level actually the channel filling needs to start happening in august okay right so to that extent you know if you're one month delayed also on the production kicking in and the movement of goods we have to see how much of it we can accelerate in terms of channel stocking etc but i yet on the broad level i remain optimistic just one more data point for you i think the driver of sales right now is the general trade channels which is small stores and the e-commerce platforms the modern retail yet continues staying uh, under pressure i right. think that trend may continue but i think that is being more than made up by the other two channels so consumers if they need a demand they don't care they will go to the other channel where they're comfortable and they'll the demand only shifts between channels i don't think it disappears on a particular channel because the channel being weak here right and if i can ask one last question um bajaj electrical is a company uh, we have fairly strong reach in the tier 2 tier 3 and uh, interiors of the country in terms of our uh, distribution and reach uh, if we see uh, the feedback from some of the other peers suggest that uh, those who are not focusing as much on these part of the market they are actually now um, taking up efforts to increase the distribution um, in uh, the smaller towns as well so a uh, do you see competitive intensity uh, for your portfolio and uh, your market um, increasing there in terms of uh, other brands being fairly available in uh, markets where the availability was not there and also would you perceive any price pressures um, or otherwise in the segment of the market for you so you know maybe yes so you know all these guys will go there too and you know there's nothing to stop them so we would be because this is the market which is actually yeah. driving demand in the current environment as petrol has dried up in terms of uh, broad okay yeah but i'm saying yes they will all go there I mean, it's a natural you know part of progression so i'd be naive to imagine that they will not go there but my optimism stays on two fronts one is in respect of them i think there is a greater shift between unorganized to organized players and unbranded to branded so i think that is a you know in our benefit and number two i think today the driver has been the rural or the smaller towns because of greater level of lockdown in the metro areas but for our kind of product categories i don't think metro demand is you know not there and therefore as the metros also open up or the urban areas relax the requir- you know the restrictions more i think that will also come back strongly by the time of the festive period so i would not overly worry about competition of ours getting to rural because i think we have other positives uh, in our favor ah uh, uh, renu i would like to add one uh, more point that uh, because of our distribution and uh, not having any wholesaling uh once this uh, wholesalers open up in the metro town the mm-hmm. distribution has been done by us in the rural areas one of the thing was there was no problem of any wholesaler going and disturbing that market when competition is going to go to those rural markets the wholesaler will always create a problem there because the wholesalers will always go there and to that extent for them to stabilize in the rural markets is not going to be easy it took us a long time ourselves so of course they can do it but it will take them a couple of years it's not that they just say okay now uh, the rural market is opened up so let me go to the rural market because the wholesaler comes in he immediately go and spoil that market so correct i add that okay right thank you so much sir thank you thank you the next question is from the line of hitesh town from icsa direct please go ahead thank you for the opportunity sir uh, sir as you mentioned like uh, uh, on the the metro region is opening now uh, and uh, you 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 are uh, you are 
you expecting a kind of good demand recovery from that segment sir could you just quantify how much is the metro region is contributing as of now in the sales sir in the epc uh, in the consumer segment so hitesh to be honest we don't uh, it's very hard to track and we definitely don't reveal that because we have broad numbers internally for urban versus rural but there tends to be a certain amount of cross pollination the way it exists so it is not uh, very accurate and therefore we don't you know publish those numbers here Uh-huh. but just to give you a qualitative sense rural has based on whatever parameters or level of accuracy we have access to rural has grown by about 3 to 4 percentage points compared to one year ago for us the sales contribution okay that's it that's a that's, that's and just to give you a little more insight uh, mm-hmm. but urban yet is 2/3 rural is 1/3 but don't take that very literally there is the margin of error in that is wide for the reasons i gave you okay. also also uh, it's very difficult to decide what is rural and what is urban where is the cut off i don't know really when somebody says two third is uh, urban uh, is is uh, raipur urban or rural we don't know you know so therefore if unless somebody defines and says because in our case one good news is that we know exactly if you give me that these are the towns which you are talking about because there's no movement from one area to the other because there's no wholesaling but in earlier cases if bombay was selling 100 crores out of that 100 crores maybe 30 40 crores was going outside bombay and therefore to that extent whether it was a, a sale of bombay or was it a sale of upcountry for the confusion now that confusion is not there whatever we are selling in uh, bombay is only for bombay and whatever is being sold in raipur is only for raipur that is the only thing so we are aware but uh, what is the where is the divide how do you call rural and what is called urban what is called uh, semi urban we don't know really so therefore we are only keeping a track that each area where we are selling are we having the required growth compared to what it was being sold in that same territory in the earlier period that's all so uh, urban means uh, generally i wanted to know about the metro region which were under the lockdown uh, and have opened recently so any which ways uh, that's a fair thing uh, mr anuj has mentioned it's uh, it's okay now sir my second question pertains to the our e-commerce channel uh, sir how has been the you know uh, growth on uh, through that channel in in our sales uh, for the for the quarter or for the for the year uh, uh, if you can just throw some light how the uh, you know uh, sales is moving through the uh, e-ja- e-commerce channel so uh, hitesh again two three points number one you know i think the driver channels for us right now and through the rest of the year will be e-commerce and will be general trade at the co- and what was going to lag is the modern format retail as well as the government channels such as uh, uh, uh no cst etc etc okay uh, in terms of e-commerce growth despite what you read in the media it is not that aggressive not for their uh, you know fault i think consumers are and behaviorally will go towards e-commerce but if you recall during april may even some parts of june there were a lot of government restrictions on e-commerce platforms being allowed to sell what is called non-essential goods so the trade shops were allowed to open up much before e-commerce was allowed to sell and to that extent we did not get the bump up as much in q1 but in july once all e-commerce is functioning fully we are continuing to see the bump up in e-commerce sales and that is continuing to now grow faster than any of the other channels there Mm, fair so my last question pertains to our advertisement expenditure uh, which obviously would uh, follow the demand scenario yes. uh, recovering the demand scenario. but uh, could you throw some some light how how should it be how would we be you know, going forward for for the rest of the year so we have generally guided in the past i don't know which ones you may have attended that historically we've been in a 3 and a half percentage point uh spend ratios of uh, percent of sales which we consciously intend to up to about 4 and a half maybe up to 5% there will be a little you know range over there uh because our sales this year will be lower than what it would have been a covid situation obviously the ad spend will also correlate to that so we'll always operate in the percentage zone over there okay uh what we've done right now within that is also temper that on a quarter by quarter basis so this quarter we did pull the plug significantly right since middle of march on ad spends that we had otherwise planned you must remember summer is a big quarter for us right. we do have ma- many product categories i've seen some of the competition numbers but we did not choose to go zero fully on summer because fans and coolers we needed to push out and therefore we did choose to advertise but though we had initially expected to increase over last year 
we've ended up i think at about 60% or something of last year's uh, june or q1 you know ad spend going forward the ad spend on a y on y basis will be higher but it will remain within the percentage range of sales and therefore should auto correct based on how we see the demand play out we will keep calibrating our ad spends on that okay good sir so my last question pertains to the the debt level you mentioned like uh, you know it is around 800 crores so just wanted to know is it a gross debt Uh, let me bring in our CFO, and it's eight hundred and ten. Yeah, yeah, it's the gross debt. It's the gross debt. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. Debt. Debt gross. Debt. 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 Uh the next question is from the line of Akshay Bor from Premji Invest please go ahead uh hi thanks for the opportunity i uh, i want to understand on on the epc uh, uh, business any path to profitability uh, you know how many quarters down the line do you expect uh, us to break even there and uh, uh, within that if you could uh, give us a sense of the underlying margins for uh, the three different businesses lighting tlt and pd um that'll be helpful thanks Thanks, Akshay. So, you know, let me take on from the second perspective. I think illumination and TL, uh, we do expect to turn around this year and de- deliver overall uh, operating level profitability. Power distribution may remain a challenge at an operating level because of, uh, I think, just the incremental work that we're doing this year. If you look at that on a marginal basis, that will be profitable. But because we have the lag of the larger bulk sitting behind that, and more than that, the impact of the larger overall cost structure that is why i think power distribution will continue to be loss making this year uh, i think the challenge between that is to differentiate between the project or execution level profitability versus overall i think the only way the overall profitability in that will kick in once we are able to we have descaled the revenue or size of quantum of work once we are able to descale the quantum of our overall infrastructure or establishment cost their overheads i think that will be completely back ended to when we are coming to closure to of the projects that we can you know take care of that piece we had originally targeted for march 21 quarter to be profitable at an exit quarter maybe one quarter at worst i would expect that uh, delay on that because of these covid and other recovery rates uh, Uh, understood. But in, in, in terms of let's say FY20, uh, how would your profitability be? Um, you know, in, in lighting, TLT, and PD. FY21, you mean 2021, right? 20, 20. Last year, I mean, last fiscal, uh, how was the profitability split up between? Uh, okay, so we don't disclose in that, Mr. Purandey, or to shed any light, but we disclose no, it no, at the EPC we, segment level and not yeah. at the breakup. Yeah. yeah, because overheads are common. It's it's allocation uh, of overheads. Understood. Understood. Yeah, okay. but I can just share with you qualitatively, Akshay, that you know uh, these were marginally not profitable, not you know high losses, but we intend to turn that around this year. So, at a, from an internal tracking perspective, they should be profitable this year. That's a TL in the lighting or illumination. And uh, you know, just trying to understand the cost structure better here. Uh, you know, the employee spend, especially, is uh, flat year on year despite the decline in the revenue and. uh and then any other uh, you know heads that you see as potential uh, you know areas where we could uh, get some cost savings so employee the reason you see flat actually we you know our normal increment cycle kicks in in q2 so last year july august when the increments had kicked in so june was flat and therefore what you're seeing this year's june is with that increment baked in so, uh, so over last year's june or q1 so with the increment it is yet flat because we on the other hand had certain you know attritions or reduction in overall manpower uh, you will see more benefit of that play out through rest of the year so q2 q3 you will see a decline y on y on uh, employee cost front so i've seen some of the other competition numbers they see a decline in q1 uh, i have a view on how q2 will pan out for them but rather than comment on that let me just say q2 q3 you will see a decline for us on employee cost numbers yeah. on the rest of the cost like i've shared on the call uh, we are continuing to you know look at a lot of these overhead cost numbers you know on a normal basis we have uh, you know achieved certain savings on q1 even as business normalizes a comeback we do not want to surrender all of the savings so we'll continue to see how much uh, 
savings we can continue to optimize going forward there. Yeah. Understood. And just just one last question on the consumer side. Uh, if you can share, what's the share of e-commerce uh, at this point? And uh, also in terms of uh, inventory in the channel, I, I know you, I understand you operated a minimal inventory, but at this point, uh, what would be the uh, overall inventory in the channel? You could share that. Thanks. So, Purandre, do you have the e-commerce number? So, you know, at this Q1 is little enough aberration to, you know, dissect that, but I think it would be between 12 and 13 percent. Purandre, Rakesh, can you confirm that on the e-commerce? And I just think exit run rate for the month, we are coming there. We did, actually, I don't know if you're there in the earlier parts of the call. Why I'm saying it's an odd quarter because April, May was suppressed and therefore I don't want to use a month, uh, quarter-wide percentage to, you know, measure e-commerce there. Or, or last year is also fine. Last year used to be about 10, 11%. So normally it used to be 10, 11%. We are seeing that inch up by, so I would think by quarter two, that should be about 13% or so, give or take, yeah. Understood. And inventory in the channel, any comments? Inventory has come down. So, you know, uh, because our supply has been constrained, but at the same time, our you know, demand fulfillment has helped us bring down overall inventory for uh, consumer products. I'm talking in our own inventory, plus, of course, the channel inventory. So to that extent, we are not overstocked on inventory. On uh, So, this, I mean, if there is further demand and if we are able to supply, I think inventory uh, is not o overbearing for us. Yeah. That helps. That's it. Is that fine? Deepak, you may move on. Uh, we'll move to the next question. The next question is from the line of Rahul Gajre from Hightong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, you know, I, well, most of the questions are answered, uh, but I thought, you know, uh, I understand, you know, this quarter has been tough on business, but I wanted to congratulate you on the balance sheet improvement that uh, you all have done. Now, uh, when I see your improvement in the cash flow that you've done, I obviously see that uh, a large part of that cash flow improvement has essentially come out of uh, capital employed out of the consumer business. And I think, like you just mentioned uh, to the earlier question, uh, given that inventory has come off, do you see that uh, you know this inventory which has uh, uh, been scaled down will go up, and therefore you know there is a risk or uh, you know there is a chance that the capital employment uh, benefit that we have seen. Uh, in the first quarter will actually wane in the second quarter. Is that something that you think is a possibility? I think that's a very fair question, Rahul. I think this 145 crores is not sustainable in terms of extrapolatable, you know, the Q1 numbers. It has been uh, uh, heightened or, you know, increased because of the reduction in capital employed in the consumer products business, okay? Right. As we stock up for the festive period, you will see an increase in the capital employed or inventories, et cetera, for the consumer business. Typically, we do have seasonal, you know, swings to that extent. I think the CFO can share. But also, it's not completely out of pattern. So typically, you stock up pre-summer. Then you do have some of this, you know, pullback in inventory. And then towards the end of the year, you again stock up. You know, the CFO can confirm exactly. But yes, you're right. So that swing factor is there. And to that extent, there will be. I don't think that means we'll go into negative cash flow. It's just that you will not see a 145, you know, extrapolatable there. Uh, let me also add uh, that uh, I personally think that though uh, this will happen for consumer products, our EPC area, I think we will, uh, first quarter was not too good in terms of collection, but the feedback which is coming is that in uh, the quarter we may have uh, some better compared to our billing, the collection may be better. So overall, our capital employees may not go up. It may not go down the 165 growth like it's happened because now, uh, consumer business will not give you any more further benefit. It may go a little negative. So, uh, but uh, there'll be sufficient positive uh, cash flows coming in because of EPC business. So, overall, I think uh, we should uh, be at the uh, first quarter end level at 800 and odd crore. Uh, consume, uh, uh, should be the similar levels we should be continuing in the second quarter also. Just, Rahul, if I may add to that, so I think the chairman is ex completely right. So, you know, that's the way it will play out. We do expect to have more collections on EPC in Q2, but the billing in Q2 will continue to remain uh, slow, or execution will remain slow because this is the monsoon quarter. So typically EPC has low billings and revenue in Q2. Q1 usually is an important quarter, so, so to that extent we miss that because you try to get a lot of work done before monsoon. So endeavor yet remains to then make up for that in Q3 and Q4 in terms of execution revenue, but the cash flow clearly, you know, to repeat, will continue right now also. 
uh, in the press release you also uh, you know made a comment in that most of the sites are often running right now uh you know given that monsoon typically like you just said you know that uh, execution is slightly slower uh so in terms of execution you know uh, how do you see this uh, you, you don't have a problem with uh, uh, labor and all those things right so we have a problem with labor on epc because a lot of labor is cross district labor and some of it is cross state labor and there are restrictions particularly in these hinterland states now on movement of labor because covid has spread from the metro areas now to till more to bihar up those kind of areas right right so there are restrictions on labor so that is a reality one of the things we used the lockdown positively for for epc because epc the work or execution of the work is only half the problem the other half of the job is to really get all your reconciliation papers approvals documentation reconciliation all of that stuff done okay so we actually used this lull to do a lot of that reconciliation documentation whatever preparation that otherwise normally you know used to lag so to that extent that is helping us drive collections even in the absence of uh, execution work so in a way we are yet not do- losing that time but yes execution is challenged because of the labor issue there yeah. right sir uh, one more uh, aspect you know about uh, this entire supply chain you know, and uh, there has been a lot of thrust by the government for local manufacturing you know and obviously uh, shut down on imports now i think in one of the interviews or one of the con calls you did mention you know that your direct uh, exposure to imports is fairly low but uh, you know your entire supply chain will have uh, significant dependence on imports so what are your thoughts on you know trying to have more indigenized uh, production or manufacturing sourcing so we already working on rahul that varies by product category lighting led related stuff we already made significant progress on substituting china imports on certain other consumer appliances the you know timelines vary we are already working on that but between but between 6 to 24 months most of it should be where we should have alternative you know uh, options for having created the alternative options then we'll evaluate on how it works from a price consumer choice perspective etc but it should not be a constraint for us is the way we are looking at it yeah. okay and that is not something which has affected the july uh, no so i think disruption. more than that it's the local supply issues so example it's not just you know our plants also operating under constrained capacity but right. you know any product category has a long value chain a mixer grinder has somebody making a jar somebody making some rubber part somebody making another plastic component if any single component supplier is under containment the entire production stops so i think the supply disruptions are more local both at a production level then certain warehouses come under containment and certain truck movements get restricted mm-hmm. so national supply chain kind of gets disrupted uh, for that reason Okay. Okay. So these are, I think, if the local thing is sorted out, I think we are fine. So I would not. Okay. I mean, I'm just talking on relative concern for us. Yeah. Sure. Now my last. Mr. Gajani, I'm in... really sorry to interrupt, but maybe request you to rejoin the queue as there are several participants sure. waiting for the turn. Sure. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, before we take the next question, we'd like to inform participants that in order that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we request you to rejoin the queue. We take the next question from the line of Drushil Zaveri from Aditya Bilal Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so the question was on debt. Uh, the target for debt uh, by the end of March 21. So you you already seen 145 crore kind of debt reduction. And earlier, if I remember, you had said 300 crore plus uh, debt reduction for FY 21. So just wanted to get a sense: is that target still uh, still there, or is there been a revision there? Let our CFO come in, please. <laughs> I think we we are uh, uh, is still there. We'll we'll say that uh, our debt is uh, reduced to 500 550 crores by the end of 21. But yeah, consolidated debt, including by March 21. Yeah, March 21. So this 810 will reduce to 500. Yeah, 550. I would rather count on 550. 550. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. That's all for me. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chetan Genoria from Alpha Accurate Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Hello, uh, Anil. So my question is with respect to the EPC business. Uh, so uh, can you give us the breakup or uh, uh, in terms of which are the uh key um, uh, what, what was the loss of the key 102 loss making uh, projects and what was the rest of the epc 
business. So can you uh, break the EPC log, uh, say for FY20 or for this quarter, and uh, how it will be going ahead? So I'm not sure I fully understood, but let us CFO, you know, address. And we don't give uh, project-wise profitability at this. So there will be some projects making losses, some projects may be uh, uh, doing good, and uh, obviously uh, it's it's a contract accounting. So uh, some of the provisions are there in the accounting. Tomorrow we may have to reverse if there is a change in raw material pricing or the thing. So uh, we don't uh, really share uh, all this uh, project-wise data to outsiders. And also, you know, Chetan, if I may, sorry, the chairman can go. Yeah, also, uh, frankly speaking, uh, how do you d divide the overhead? How do you, uh, d uh, you know, account for it? It's, a, it's very difficult to say on a variable basis, margin basis, what is the basis of profit loss are you talking about? This extra business I did not do on a variable basis is making profit. But if I put the overhead, it doesn't make profit. So therefore, we don't go into that. We only say each project, are we able to uh, complete it in time and collect the money? That's the uh, cycle which is most critical. Cash flow is very important, and that's what we are working for in future. All new projects which we are taking, we are keeping a track of the cash flows, how fast the uh, rotation will take place so that our return on capital employed has to go up, which is just not negative. It's hardly any return you are getting because of this situation of a lot of money is getting blocked up. So that has to be cleared now. That's what we have worked on, and we'll see how things are. Chetan, the other aspect for you to remember in the AS7 accounting, so the project level costing and revenue moves in tandem. Okay, okay. The losses that you're seeing now is largely because of not the project level cost, but the, the overheads cost uh, while the project's at a standstill. So the overhead is not getting absorbed, and therefore a lot of these are because of the standing cost. Uh, but the project revenue and cost typically moves in tandem and would get booked together. Yeah. Okay, okay, I understand. Uh, I just wanted to understand the UP loss, but uh, I understand the difficulty. Uh, my uh, question is, uh, uh, so EPC business, you said that it's from next year, uh, Q1 probably will be uh, able to completely reduce our losses and uh, come to break on. Is, is my understanding correct in this respect? That's our target, yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayank Bandari from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yes, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, my question is uh, pertains to your distribution. Uh, so, the Gaz Electrical having one of the best distribution uh, touch points across the country. So, uh, I was just, uh, in terms of strategically, you should have gained some market share given that you have the largest number of touch points. But that does not reflect in your numbers. Like I'm talking in terms of ECD only. Now, how do you thought around this? Sir? How do you come to this conclusion that we have not improved our market share unless you, if we have shown a negative growth, we have to find out what our competitors have grown. So you know, unless if you, uh, we have negative 50 percent, they are negative 60 percent, then we've grown market share. They've grown. There's negative 40%, then they've uh, improved market share. So unless we have the competition data, just because we are negative 50% doesn't mean that we've lost market share. You understand? Very important to understand that market share is relative to somebody else's growth or no, uh, degrowth. You understand that? So unless we have those figures, we can't come to a conclusion whether we've gained or lost market share. Okay, okay. So basically, we don't have any industry data as such to indicate uh, that we have gained or lost, right? So, Mank, that also varies significantly by category by category. Even when competition you see, even if you look at the ECD segment, their mix of categories is very different. One particular player, for example, is in the male grooming thing, like you know, right? So a lot of yeah. their current gain in this lockdown period has come from that. So similarly, if you look at different players, you know, somebody has, I don't think washing machines are necessarily bundled in, but different players. So it is very hard to generalized market share at a overall you know business level those are always tracked at a category level but the second aspect the way i see it is all of us which are the top three four companies would have gained market share right now versus the unorganized or unbranded players so to that extent i think there will or is being or will be greater consolidation i don't have numbers to prove that but if these unorganized players were reported 
then I'm sure their drop would be more than this 50% here. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, so there, there, there will be some consolidation for sure. And, uh, In favor of the top four or five players versus the others. And within that, okay, then category okay. by category, it would vary. So, you know, yeah. I mean, I don't want to name players because it's not fair for yeah. me to do that, but I do have a view on which player has gained a loss in which product category. Yeah. Okay. Also, okay. also, let me add that uh, uh, there's another issue which comes up is that uh, except for fans and lighting, there's at least a uh, body like IFMA, which is Fan Manufacturer Association, and Elkoma, which has some data. Appliances, there's no data available. It's all guesswork or just uh, you talk to competition and that's all you find out. So whether an appliance is gained or lost, we can't say. Except by logic, we say if you've, gained the, if you've grown the 15 or 20 percent, you've gained market share, we think. But we, we can never be sure. Maybe somebody else has grown the 25 percent. So this is something which is in India. Unfortunately, there is no proper data to confirm whether we've gained or lost market share. We can only look at our own growth levels, which is important. Okay, okay. And sir, in terms of the margin expansion of 200 bits in ECD category, uh, any uh, any guidance you can give us a full year for ECD margin? So overall, my guidance means 1% expansion at the operating margin level for consumer business. This year, if you leave quarter one aside, because that's an aberration at the bottom line, on the normal quarters, 1% expansion at operating margin level. Thank you. The next question is from Taran Banushali from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good evening. Uh, so my question is largely related to the UP project. So what would be the revenue this quarter we have registered and what would be the receivables from uh, the UP project? Mr. Purandre? APC revenue, uh, just a second. Yeah, APC uh, elimination uh, we did uh, 58 crores for distribution we did 66 crores and uh, transmission line tower we did 90 crores. Okay. And for the UV is APC within APC power distribution, but we don't split that up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what would be the receivables uh, pertaining to the UP order? UP receivables are in the range of 8 820 crores. And sir, what would be the net debt level for us? Net debt, because cash is just 12 crores. 12 crores. Yeah. Because it was almost 100 or crores at the end of Q4. March. Yeah, March there was a March. cash. Because we conserve some cash looking at the COVID uh, uncertainty. Uh, now the cash as of uh, June was 12 crores. So, sir, the uh, net debt level uh, reduction is uh, low at the 60 odd crores? Uh, so, it is 183 is the actual reduction, minus the cash utilized is around 90 crores. So, it will be around 90 crores is a net reduction. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. The next question is from Rahul Soni from SIMSS Limited. Please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, just one question from my side. Uh, sir, what is, uh, what percentage of your revenue is coming from uh, online sales? And uh, what is the margin uh, between the product you are selling to your, uh, your dealer's uh, network channel and to the online? So, Rahul, I shared that earlier. Uh, you know, Q1 is slightly odd to try and look at it at a quarter level on the contribution because uh, e-commerce online opened after the trade date, so it would not be a fair comparison. But just to give you a directional answer, traditionally it used to be in a 10-11% uh, range of contribution from online. I think on a run rate basis now, let's say Q2 should be probably 13-odd percent, so about a couple of percentage point increase but maybe some margin of error there. Uh, we don't disclose contribution of margins, you know, for each channel. So what, uh, what kind of uh, uh, sales percentage you are seeing uh, two years down the line? 
if I may be honest, and I've said that before, you know, I we have our estimation, but publicly we don't have a bias because to us all the channel channels are you know equally important. We make sure that we are available across all the channels, and let the consumer make the choice, and we keep restocking or refilling it, refueling it. So we don't want to take a view on you know which channel. Uh, is favored. None of them are favored for us. Of course, you and I know that e-commerce will continue to outgrow the general uh, trade. Okay, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference back to Mr. Deepak Agarwal for closing comments. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining, and uh, thanks, uh, management, for uh, their valuable time. Uh, sir, you have any closing remarks? Uh, no, I would only say that uh, uh, thank you for joining this uh, conference call, and uh, we are very uh, optimistic, positive. Actually, there are a lot of improvement and a lot of corrections that has been done. So this COVID is on one side, of course, we've lost out April, May, but overall, from a long-term point of view, we've become a much stronger company, and therefore, you can see some uh, better results coming in the future. With these words, I would like to thank you again. That's it. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining this call. Uh, and thank you. Thank you.